And then he opened the door and he was like, okay, but once you do like, you have to leave, you can't be like on the premises without a reservation. There's a change lane one time on screen. It's trying to change lanes two miles before it needs to be in the far right lane. What the f I'm in the car with the guys. We're going out. <laughs> It's a cold one this morning, but I'm here in my garage with no Lamborghini, no knowledge, and no books, but I do got a Tesla, and it's road trip time. We are headed down to Austin, Texas for the Cybertruck delivery event. Um, I ended up getting a ticket. The lady is the plus one, and while we were tempted to fly, we thought that eh, I think it'd be kind of fun to turn it into a little road trip. We are looking at roughly about a... 2200 mile round trip so about 1100 miles one way 1100 miles back this probably looks very very familiar to when we did the florida road trip and that's because i miscalculated see i originally thought that austin texas was around the same amount of time distance miles all that stuff as orlando turns out it's about an extra three to four hours so we should have been leaving to get there around three to four at about midnight it's 3 a.m <laughs> so we're not going to be getting there till I believe with the time change, like seven to eight, but the time change may have been calculated when I did our route planning. But nonetheless though, you all already know the car, of course. It is my 2022 Model 3 Performance and it probably looks identical to the last road trip. And that's because I just put my winter wheels on about two days ago. I normally put them on at the end, middle to end of November, or that's normally when I swapped my winter wheels. And uh, yeah, I'm rolling the same ones that I did last or last winter so ts5 t sport lines wrapped in cross climate twos i actually have a full dedicated video coming um just talking about the wheels uh and everything uh but yeah i also made another miscalculation the car has been charged up to 100 percent for an hour now it should have not completed its charging it shouldn't have completed its charging until about 240 and as you can see it's 250 turns out it completed charging at like 120. So if we look here, you'll see 306 miles on a single charge with an odometer reading of almost 13,000 miles. So that's pretty good. That's only like, that's like not even 10 miles of degradation. Uh, but maybe it's sitting at 100% in uh, 34 degree weather, which it's actually a lot colder than that. Uh, probably may have done some damage. Hopefully not uh, <laughs> too bad though. I, I can't believe like it literally charged 20% in like an hour on just a normal 1450 pulling 32 amps. So I, I'm not too sure. Um, the, in terms of the setup in here, still got the radar detector. We do have a new phone mount over here. We still got our MagSafe mount. Got another phone mount down here, low profile. These are test stuff's new things. I'm absolutely obsessed with this. I love this so much. Um, but the cockpit is still pretty much the same as the last road trip. And like I said, it's just me and the lady going down. So yeah, the packing isn't anything crazy. I got my big thing of water. You all know how I feel about buying water on a road trip. And then we'll come back here. Uh, just a few bags for both of us, some shoes. You know, I always carry my bottle of O&R with a little towel. And then we got our tire inflator. Of course, won't go anywhere without that. Got our little portable vacuum. I got my torque wrench because I literally just swapped these wheels and normally I will retorque at 50 miles, but because we're, I just put them on and we're immediately doing like 2000 miles, um, just in case, you know, just in case. So I, I already retorque, but just in case. And then we have our Tesla uh, charging bag, but the only thing that's in here is adapters and um, pucks. So jack stands or jack pads, the uh, little pucks, because as you all know, and I actually kind of feel bad about this because I made like an entire video on like home charging and, you know, being able to take this with you. And I don't take it with me anymore just because I'm, the supercharging network is just that good that I just don't feel like I need it. Uh, which is honestly another kind of little topic of this video is the fact that like, we're not going to be doing anything crazy. Like I put the route into a better route plan. Let me go ahead and get this put in here. Here is the route we're looking at. 
and we're looking at a total of about eight stops. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly hop in for a little voiceover here simply because that for the next like minute and a half, I was mainly just praising the Tesla like in-car navigation and the supercharger network and how you used to have to be a little bit more involved with your navigation planning in terms of like maybe using third-party websites and all that other stuff, like a better route planner, what I was saying, and that, you know, this trip, I was just putting it in the nav and just letting Tesla do its thing and how it's always been great for me and everything like that. And well, then you're going to see that during the road trip that that's not the case uh, in terms of the actual like in car nav. So I didn't want to sit here and like praise it for the next like minute or so. And then, well, yeah, it, it not be that great. So and the last thing that we have to do is that we actually need to go into our trips. And even though I just set this, the TS fives, 61 miles, we're actually going to redo this. We name it Texas man. I'm going to reset Texas man. Yeah, let's hit the road. Town. Yeah, I guess just the whole theme of this video is just miscalculations, honestly, because I completely miscalculated how cold it was and how much that was going to affect efficiency. We are currently averaging 437 watt hours per mile. We've went 95 miles on, if that'll focus, on 60%. It has started to come down a little bit because I didn't realize I was running the heat at like 72 on high. So I dropped it down to 68, put it on low. But yeah, big, big miscalculation on my end because I was totally just going to skip this charger and just keep driving even to like Bowling Green, which Bowling Green, I think we could have made it, but there's only one charger here and it's a 150. I swear I thought they put a 250 in Bowling Green because that's a pretty popular place. Um, but no, there's only a 150. If I can get that to pull up. Yeah, right there. Uh, so we're stopping here, though, I think now the car is starting to calculate the really bad efficiency. So hopefully the uh, the times will be a little bit more accurate on like how long we need to charge. Because initially it was only having us charge for, I mean, I don't exactly know, but I don't think it was as long as what it's saying now. Go ahead, we'll get plugged in. Okay, the connectors click and I don't know if y'all are able to see but I was able to get my supercharging miles um so hopefully that kicks in and this is actually uh I actually get this for free I don't know if there's like a like a waiting period or something for them to like activate but we just hit 10 percent so let's go ahead let's continue trip let's get unplugged very boring stop honestly but that's to be expected it's like 4 a.m got a little gas station over there nothing too crazy oh i think it's a subway nothing too crazy around but you do have access to stuff it was a 250 but i mean we pulled like barely 100 the whole time and i think it's just a combination of the current soc and the temp out so We got another one hour and 49 minutes to the next stop, which will be in Nashville. We will be arriving with, now it says 18%. I don't know. The calculations are all over the place today. I don't know what's going on. You all just saw that it said 10%. I don't know if like, if everything's just adjusting to essentially the double efficiency and then like, maybe it's, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. So <laughs> let's just, let's just get on the road.
first time this has happened, but like sometimes it'll sit there and it'll be blue at you for like 20 seconds and then you just, you know, and you're fine. Sometimes it's like, I don't even have time to put my hand on the wheel before it just flashes right at me. So we ended up getting disabled with like 40 miles left and I was gonna just pull over and quickly like cycle the charge port door. Pretty sure that still works, but ended up literally hitting like just copious amounts of traffic. But we've arrived with 19%, so literally double what it was estimating. I don't know what's going on with the estimates. Uh, if we check our efficiency, we've gotten a lot better, 324, and we're down below 400 for the total trip. Let's go ahead and let's get pulled in. We're not pulled in, but plugged in. This might be one of the worst superchargers that I've seen in terms of location. There's nothing here except the hotel. Um, and like the hotel parking just ices the chargers thankfully there's 14 of them uh now this looks like that this is potentially was a 150 and they got upgraded to a 250 so if we plug in here we're not pulling the full 250 then you're on like the 150 side so oh uh, yeah but there's i believe there's 14 stalls one of them's out of order it's like four something four knowing me it'll be the one i'm at we're gonna be sat here for an entire hour apparently. And what's really weird is that he keeps on trying to precondition like an hour out. Like last time on our last little stretch, we were still like an hour away and it pops up that it's preconditioning. And you hear over here like the car, like even while we're going doing like 70 on the road, you hear the car like start just getting louder and louder because it's like it's like preconditioning. And then it just stops. And then we get closer and it just doesn't precondition. I mean, we're still at like 34 kilowatts. I'm gonna sit here for a few minutes and if it doesn't ramp up anymore, I'm just gonna swap stalls. Sure enough, swap stalls and within literally seconds, within seconds, it ramped up to 250. Okay, so 9% arrival in Jackson. Uh, I ended up accidentally canceling the trip and when I tried putting it back in, it completely changed my route, which is like the second or third time now it's done this but now it wants us to stop in Jackson and skip. So we're gonna stop before Memphis, skip over Memphis. I don't know why there's not an option to like slide and like remove this charging stop to see like, you know, if you just don't wanna go to a certain charging stop, like the, the, as far as I know, there's just not an option to do that. Jackson is a 250, which is fine with me. Uh, this stop though is absolutely awful. Um, at least at like 6 a.m. because the, there is a restaurant here, but it's closed. And when I went up to the door to go into the hotel, so I'm like standing at the door and the front guy is like looking at me and I'm like, hey, I just need to use the bathroom. And he was like, and he like looked at me and then he opened the door and he was like, okay, but once you do like, you have to leave, you can't be like on the premises without a reservation. I'm like, I'm just using the bathroom. What do you think I'm gonna do here? So yeah, this place uh, in Dickerson, on Dickerson Pike in Nashville, before the restaurant opens, terrible. I, this is awful. Plus, like, the chargers on the far end, they just sit at 30 kilowatts. I, I don't know, but let's go ahead. Let's hit the road. We got two hours to go 133 miles with an arrival of now 11% instead of 10%, and that'll probably change, but estimated arrival, 821. Let's get on the road. made it to Jackson with 9% under 400 watt hours now for the total trip. This has just been a very weird road trip so far. About 15 minutes ago, there's no other charger near, at least supercharger. Uh, this pops up and says that this station is now closed. Um, I didn't really know what to do. I mean, there's something I could do. I did double check and apparently there is an Electrify America in Jackson. So at least I kind of had that as a backup, but I would hate to have Electrify America as a backup. 
It says these are closed, but there's people here. And it looks like that they're charging, so we're going to... Uh, I actually might be in the wrong stall, right stall. No, that's... Let's just do this one. Oh, we got an orange. And... Okay, so we are charging. Let's see what we start pulling. I might be plugged into the wrong one. It's weird. So this guy's pulled in and then you have this one right here. So those are both pull throughs. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I am in the right one because that one is a please use other side. Yeah. And so I am in the right one. However, it looks like just like the last charger I started on, it's just stuck at 32 kilowatts. So looks like I'm going to have to unplug and try again. Those over there look like the old ones that are probably 150s. I don't know if they've upgraded them. And apparently those over there, I don't know if you can see them, they have some over there that apparently were the temporary ones. And once again, we had to flip stalls. We moved all the way down to the end, just did not charge at all, would not charge. I don't know, I don't know. Like it says that this is out of order, but it's a temporary closure, but as you can see, I mean, we're pulling 260. So I, I don't know. This has been a very, very weird trip so far. All right, so 10% arrival at Brinkley. Once again, when we got back in the car, it was trying to change our route again and get us a stop in Memphis with like 60% battery and charge for 20 minutes when all we had to do was charge here another like 20 minutes and then we could get to Brinkley at like a super low SOC or at least around 10%, you know, maybe not super, super low, but um, it's a nice little spot. There's roughly about 24 stalls. There's like a little country store that's kind of like a restaurant as well. And then there's a Waffle House back over there, but we got we got a two hour 18 minute drive uh 153 miles and once again it says a closed supercharger on our on our way so I, I don't know if maybe that was talking about this one but at this point like i'm just routing manually to each supercharger because it keeps changing and keeps trying to just do just random weird stuff and then i we ended up going into that little country store and I'm in there for like 10 minutes just standing at the register just and their their card readers just aren't working. And I just it's I'm hoping that the next one just goes off without a hitch. I don't got to unplug change chargers or anything like that. So let's get on the road. And we have made it to Brinkley. This was a lot smoother than last time. At first we were like manually routing to it. And then once we were on the road, I ended up uh, ending the trip and then routing to our original destination with all the chargers. And sure enough, we arrived here with 10%. Let's go ahead and let's get plugged in. Looks like we'll be here for 55 minutes. Oh, and these are 250s and they got a pull in stall right there. There's, there's eight stalls and there's not anything crazy. Uh, there's like a food something down there and some stores here. And there's a super dollar. Yeah, so decent amount of stuff here. There's a Sonic right down there. A McDonald's across the street or a Waffle House. It's in a nice big open parking lot. So let's see where we're pulling. Is this going to be the first time that we don't have to unplug? Oh, it looks like it is. Right off the bat, 255. It seems like that this has taken a lot longer than I remember last time for like stops to 
like calculate. I don't know why. Like I keep having to like end trips and then redo it for it to get us to calculate like a, a rival SOC at the next stop. I don't know why that is. I don't know why that's happening, but uh, yeah, we're gonna go grab some food, um, get out, walk around while this charges 45 minutes to continue trips. So we'll check back in when it's getting done. There we go, 10%. We're gonna be on the road for two hours and 48 minutes, 176 miles. And arrive at 241, it's currently 1153. I think we charged here for our original time was what, 45 minutes? 55. All right, well, if that's the case, well, then we only charge for 45 instead of the full 55. So let's go ahead and let's get unplugged. Oh. I have spotted another set of T Sport Line wheels. I saw one, I saw, I saw somebody with TS5s, but they were on 20s at, at the last one, and now I see. I don't know exactly which one those are, but yeah, I swear, I'm just seeing them everywhere now. I mean, I think they're such good looking wheels. But I'm not driving this stretch. She's driving it. And I'm gonna try to get some sleep, so. And look at that, it's already down to 8%. I wish there was like a low percentage mode that it would let you throw on to where like, you're completely fine with chancing it. I, I don't, there, there, there is no chance. Like we are going to make it there. It's only 176 miles. We're at 91%, even at 350 watt hours per mile. Like we, we are making that no problem. Let's hit the road. see you attempt to park you got about a million cameras it can't be that hard wait are there two lines yes <laughs> I'm trying to go in between the yellow ones I'm pretty sure <laughs> yeah the yellow ones are the new lines the white ones are the old ones. Like at first, I was seeing like the cars lines. I was like, wait, no, there's actual like other lines there. Yeah. Yeah, just take it all the way back. Shoot. I, I don't think you did bad. All right. Yeah. So we arrived at 17%. And did it do any like weird stuff? any of the whole no. like switching and this looks like what it said last time we are currently rolling at 343 so i'm gonna hop out and we are going to get plugged in oh i like these these are like full back ends so and these are all 250s and it looks like we're in a nice spot too i don't know how many are here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. It looks like there's 16 stalls. There's a Wendy's with like, a, it kind of looks like a gas station. And uh, I mean, that's about it. I said it's a, it is a nice spot. Oh, and then there's a Chicken Express right over there. We're gonna be here for, how long does it say? 40 minutes. How long? 40 minutes, 40 minutes? not bad. Yeah, so we did end up arriving with about seven more percent than it had expected, and we're gonna be here for roughly about forty minutes. But we've been cutting off about ten, about ten minutes per stop, just leaving just a tad bit early. And, you know, had we known that we would arrive with seventeen percent, we could have left even earlier at the last stop. So okay, and we just hit ten percent. Looks like it is three o three. Next stop is at 5.44, two hours and 41 minutes, 174 miles. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug. She's running in to get some stuff for the road. Oh. 
she did this last little stretch of driving, but now I'm back to driving. It gave me enough time to get an hour and some change in of sleep. We're like right on the border of Texas. I, I cannot believe it's taken this long. Like this morning when I was talking and I said I made a miscalculation, for some reason in my head, I was thinking an 18 hour drive starting at 3 a.m. would get us there at five to six. And that's just completely wrong or like like four four five six that's just completely wrong i don't know what i was thinking so i miscalculated on the miscalculation and it'll actually get us there at like nine to ten and that's nine to ten their time so central because we started at eastern <sighs> yeah she's coming back but i just wanted to point out that literally like not even two seconds after I ended that last clip, this jumped up from 10% to 22%. What, what is going on? We left like what, like 10 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago? Yeah. And the arrival SOC has already dropped down to nine. Okay, I'm gonna hold all thoughts until we get plugged in and get inside. We're out of Bucky's. So, one second. We arrived at 12%, 5.34. Let's get plugged in. These are 250s. Two fifty two. Yeah, so, doing good. So, I ended up getting a club melt with a Texas cheese steak burrito. And she got a club melt too. And then I got a drink. Um, this is a very short trip, or a very short stop. So this stop and the next stop are both like sub, uh, 30 minutes so this stop was like 20 minutes next stop is going to be 25 minutes all the stops prior to this have been like 40 minutes and it did it again on the way here like as we're passing a really congested area because i went back on and showed how it was nine it was had a, our soc arrival at 19 percent it dropped from 19 to 7 in like 15 minutes and then like right after i filmed that portion it tried rerouting us and getting us on an exit like a mile away. And it wanted us to stop and charge at like 30%. So thankfully, you know, I have all of it recorded. So I know like what my next stop is. I can just check real quick or what my next stop was supposed to be. And I just had to manually put this in. Plus, I mean, this is a Bucky's. Of course, I'm going to want to stop here instead. But like this was the perfect arrival. We arrived with like 10%. It was great. These are all 250s. And whenever I put the manual supercharging location back in, it gave me another 19% SOC arrival. I, I don't know what's going on. And we were fiddling with it and I ended up missing the like welcome to Texas sign, recording it with the GoPro, cause I normally like to get those and I ended up missing it. So we saw it like very last second, like with our own eyes, but I wasn't able to get it on video. So don't get me wrong though. I don't want it to sound like that. This road trip has been difficult by any means. I'm just the type of person that when like when you tell me I'm gonna stop at a certain place and I hit the road with, you know, like in mind, I'm gonna be on the road for two hours. And then all of a sudden you try telling me 15 minutes later, actually you're gonna stop in like 20 minutes for like 10 minutes. That, that it, It's just frustrating. It's just frustrating. However, like it still has been a comfortable trip. At no point have I been scared that I'm not gonna make it somewhere or whatever. I, that, that's, that's kind of a given now. I said at the back of the beginning, of this entire thing that, you know, the supercharger network is so reliable. I've never been at that point throughout this trip. It's just been kind of frustrating that it's done it a lot more this time around than it did with the Florida trip. But so we didn't spend that long charging, but we are overcharged, excuse me, to about 28%. On the arrival, we're gonna be arriving at the next supercharger stop at about 7.57, an hour and just say two hours and a hundred miles. So, but uh, she's gonna be taking over this leg of the trip so I can not drive for a little bit, so. Let's get unplugged. Oh. oh, God. And 
you know, a lot of people, when I tell them that like driving with autopilot doesn't actually feel like driving, like you can triple your like driving time. What did you say earlier? I said it feels like I haven't done anything. <laughs> and you drove for like three hours and you said, yeah, it feels like I've been driving for like 30 minutes. Yeah. So all I did was this. <laughs> yep, pretty much. It, re it really does enable these like super, super long road trips with ease, but let's hit it. And we have made it to our final stop here in don't even ask me to pronounce it. I bought, I bought, actually, hang on. We need to do this because it ended up, uh, I actually don't remember if it ended up trying to reroute us. I don't, I don't think so. I think we just routed straight there, uh, just cause we didn't want to deal with it. But, um, so we need to charge up here for, it's actually, yeah, only about 15 minutes it looks like. So us overcharging at the last one did end up helping out a little bit. Uh, but we're going to overcharge here until we're at about 20% instead of the normal like 10% just because this will be our hotel and we're not guaranteed to get like, you know, chargers. So let's go and get plugged in. This is a 250 and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's eight stalls and 250s don't share power, but they do share power site-wide. So... There actually may be enough cars here. So we might get some decreased speeds, but it doesn't look like it. About to surpass 200 here. Yeah, so doing pretty good. It really is entertaining to see somebody that's not used to driving an electric car, drive it with like the region braking and like them trying to use autopilot and all this other stuff. And it's, it's funny to say the least. We're finishing up charging. This was a really nice spot, like just stupidly nice bathrooms for no reason. What percent are we at? 22? What percent? 22. 22, all right. So, I'm gonna go ahead and unplug. We got, uh, so far we're at 977 miles, 328 kilowatt hours at a 336 watt hours per mile. So we're doing a lot better. What's our last? Okay, it's actually not that good. Dang you. Let's get it done. And we have made it with a total of 1,100 miles, 370 kilowatt hours at 333 watt hours per mile. And we are currently at 20%, so no sentry mode. And the hotel does have chargers, but I mean, we're, we're, we're literally in Austin, so they're already taken. <laughs> like if, if we wanted to use those, we should have been here probably like eight hours ago. Uh, but I also believe that they're paid for, so they're not free. But we're going to go get checked in, and we'll pick back up tomorrow at the event. All right, so I'm just going to voice over the event because I didn't really have any videos planned other than filming for, like, future video use. I thought about doing a vlog or even maybe live streaming it, but I feel like that's out of the ordinary for this channel, you know? Maybe for future events... Let me know if that's something y'all would watch. So we ended up taking Tesla's recommendation and Ubering in, which actually ended up being a bad idea that I'll mention later. And we got there around 1.20. They ended up putting us in this big tent to like wait in line for our tickets and IDs to be checked. I didn't hear about this until later on, but apparently they oversold the event due to like capacity laws or something like that and ended up turning away a lot of plus ones toward the 2 p.m. mark. Nonetheless, though, we got through and people that got tickets via the referrals received Cybertruck themed metal passes, which 
was honestly really cool. They then loaded us onto what looked like prison buses from the outside, or at least some of them did, and drove us to the front entrance of the factory, which is huge, by the way, like the entrance, but also the factory. They had the sexy lineup along with like a silhouette of the Cybertruck parked out front. We enter into the factory where they have like a blown up Cybertruck sitting there. Not like, you know, actually like destroyed, kaboom, blown up, but, you, you know, blown up. Now, keep in mind that at this point, I don't think that it was public knowledge that we'd be touring like part of the factory. At least I didn't know. So when they routed us like to the side of where the Cybertruck was blown up at and through some doors, it was a big surprise to me. The tour itself was kind of a tour, but it was more self-guided. Like there were some Tesla employees at stations explaining what they were looking at, like what we were looking at, but you could just move at your own pace. And there were just some things that the machines were just kind of doing their own thing. And no one was really there to explain like what they were doing. But for most things that were moving around, there was someone stationed there. Uh, they even had a little cyber truck themed cart, which a lot of people were memeing that this is the new base model. Uh, as we neared the end of the tour, the cyber trucks were getting like more and more complete, which was also pretty cool. So like you kind of start at the front where it's just parts here and there. And then as you go further back, the parts start forming together to make, you know, the cyber truck. Then at the end was the big tunnel, which I think everyone has seen, uh, like the big like white lights and all that, uh, which had a really cool like Tesla logo that would have been really good for pictures. But they didn't have any light shining from the front, so the pictures didn't really look that good. Once we were through the tunnel, we became cattle as they began herding everyone into a small little section at the back. Uh, from there, it became a contest on who could hold their phone the highest while Elon got on stage and did the whole best truck ever spiel. However, there was one instance that I don't know if it was picked up on on the live stream that Tesla was doing, but when Elon got Franz to like throw the ball, the crowd got like really quiet and started yelling, what about a metal ball? And I'm going to let that clip play here for a second. Where's the metal ball? Where's the metal ball? <laughs> metal ball! Metal ball! <laughs> I mean, I think and I honestly expected him to pull out a metal ball and be like, oh, yeah, now time for the metal ball, blah, blah, blah. But he didn't. And it was really awkward for like five or six seconds because people were kind of just looking around at each other like that's not a recreation. Uh, I think they should have just not done that part if the glass couldn't survive a metal ball. And well, even though they're claiming it is the toughest, most durable, you know, rock resistant glass, glass is glass and well, we all know. After that, they had the deliveries and eventually they freed us from the back and I immediately shot over to one of the cyber trucks. I was able to experience the entire back seat and the driver's seat. I'm like 6'1 and had good leg room in the back with decent headroom if I didn't sit straight up. The driver's seat was also pretty good, but to be honest, I was more interested in playing with the screen and you know doing all the stuff that it could do, but I didn't want to be like that guy hogging the seat because there was like a line of people crowding around at this point trying to get in or potentially getting kicked out for activating the spray because I, I really wanted to activate the spray wipers just to see how it worked or adjusting the suspension because there were like a bunch of different options for the suspension but there were people like literally in the bed of the truck and yeah I I, I didn't want to be like that guy but after I got out uh, I ended up getting a picture in the bed of the truck and we exited the same way that we came in so we essentially did the tour in reverse once we exited the factory in the entrance area uh, they now had some more cyber trucks set up on display including a Matt Black one, which a lot of people were going crazy over. One with a tent camp on the back, which is apparently like a $3,000 uh, accessory. Some lined up doing a light show in sync. Crashed ones on the side, along with like the shot up ones that everyone has seen. And we also got to see the foundation series that has the three headed like beast on the back, which I think is to signify. I don't know if it's to signify the foundation or to signify that it's a triple motor, three heads. Apparently, foundations are the ones that are getting delivered or the ones that got delivered. But yeah, from there, we took the bus back to where we originally got like our passes and everything. And we proceeded to wait for over an hour, and it wasn't just us, there were other people there as well waiting super, super long um, for an Uber because turns out there's a toll road that leads to Tesla and we had four Ubers cancel on us and a lot of other people were having Ubers cancel on them. It was 
it was pretty bad. But all around, I thought the event was really cool, and I hope to be able to go to more in the future. I also thought the Cybertruck was cool, though I'm a performance sedan guy, so I'm not super hyped for it like a lot of other people are. I may get one. It all just depends on when I'd be able to take delivery. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts on the Cybertruck down in the comments section now that we know all the on-paper specs and that new pricing. And I will see you all in the next one.